This is Did You Do It? It's 6.33 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, September 3rd, 2018. And uh, currently, we, I've got you at uh, a video Mr. MBB did a few weeks ago entitled Mysterious Rocks Washing Ashore of Lake Michigan, based on a comment he received from Eric L. Now, for those of you who haven't watched my, uh, my earlier videos on the pumice, um, I don't want to make you suffer through those, so I want to try to go over it real quick with you here. Now, when, he, when this was brought up, I remembered early days on the southern tip finding these pumice stones, not in the abundance, but quite often. And also natural tar, we hated stepping on that stuff. But here's where I'm going to take you first. I did a search, basically it said Seamounts backslash pumice. All right. Now, usually I don't click the first link, but I did just for plausibility purposes. And I came up with this article, it's from 2012 at wired.com. It's called, What is the Fate of Volcanic Pumice Rafts? Well, isn't that something? That sounds like something that may have floated ashore in Ludington, but we don't know. Now, I'm going to do some reading here. It's not a good image. It's black on black, but I'm going to read, read something to you. The streamers of pumice, likely each less than a few kilometers across from July 18, 2012, eruption of Havre, seamount spreading across the Pacific Ocean. The pumice has spread over an area of 20, 250,000 square kilometers in a little over a month. Image taken August 19, 2012, courtesy of NASA, NASA. Now, this is really interesting. So the potential the potential's there for pumice rafts to exist and float ashore. And, uh, you know, on the seamount uh, theory, uh, I did a video entitled Lake Michigan Gas Release and Ludington Buoy Temperatures. I actually went over to this, uh, to earth.nullschool.net, looking at the uh, sea surface temperature anomalies first. If there was an underwater seamount under the lake, I would expect uh, temperatures to be higher here. But what I found was there was a low temperature anomaly here that turned out to be from the tributaries draining into the lake. And I didn't see any indication of sea uh, uh, lake temperature increases. So I went on in, in the volcanic uh, thinking and I checked the sulfur dioxide emissions possibly from the lake. And I found an isolated region pocket over the lake that was higher in sulfur dioxide readings than all around it. So that kind of, you know, leads me to believe it's plausible that there's maybe something under the water there, you know, spitting out pumice or whatever. So on, on that, well, I ended up taking you a little bit later to uh, this image here. Now, I don't have this uh, link for you because they, I'm not allowed on it anymore. But it turns out Lower Michigan is a sedimentary uh, unit. And underneath it is a... Well, Precambrian, okay. And over here in Wisconsin, the igneous rocks and Precambrian rocks kind of come and tickle the surface. But anything in Michigan is all sedimentary and there's no volcanic, uh, no forms of uh, rocks. Now, the possibility of the, uh, the intrusion coming through up by Ludington exists to uh, intrude through the sedimentary stones. And... So it's still plausible, you know, of a volcanic nature underneath the water there. Now, let's, let's see, where did I take him? Now, about the uh, sulfur dioxide, there was a comment brought up about a power plant south of Ludington. And I, brought, I looked into that, and it turns out that's a, a uh, what they call a pumped storage power plant. It, it's, it's a clean power plant. So that didn't work out so well, so I went across the lake and I discovered a coal burning power plant in Sheboygan. Now that might explain the sulfur dioxide kind of drifting over the lake. So, well, maybe that's that, you know, so we may have found the, the source of the uh, sulfur dioxide. But I'm not convinced of that just yet. There's the Sheboygan. So, what I kind of went into the, uh, then I got another comment also about from uh, Pinwheel, actually. Let's see where that is. And she brought up the fact that wasn't it Lake Michigan that had an oil well oil well leak about two years ago and in the middle of the lake too, which means they have drilled into the lake bed and like fracking created a breach at like Hawaii. 
wonder if it has reopened in some volcanic seepage. Now that is a great, great point. So I got to snooping around and I found out, in fact, oh, they're clamoring to get that stuff and there's a lot of it. And I, I'll give you all these links that I have available. Oil and gas is tapped from rigs set on the shoreline and slant drilled to reach reservoirs some 4,000 feet deep beneath the bottom of the Great Lakes and up to two or three miles offshore. So it's been happening and we don't know how long. There's the title of the article and I'll give you that. So that eventually led to this search I took. All right, let's see, I'm gonna go back you up here. Right here to the Department of Environment Quality, oil and gas well applications. Well, now I'm just gonna give you these, this particular page didn't help me. So I ended up coming down here and clicked on maps and data. Now I'm just going to give you these links because they're not going to let me open any of this stuff. So I'm going to go through this quickly. All right. Come on, boys. One time's ticking. All right. All right. They brought that up. Okay. Prosperity regions. Now, I'm not allowed to look at any of this stuff. But I can tell you what. Uh, this You're going to find some information here. All right. You just need to click into that. And uh, what did I do here? Uh, anyway, let's see, I'm just going to have to take you to the next one here. This is where I ended up. Uh, the Geo, okay, I'll take you back here. The Geo web face. I went down here to click the Geo web face live maps. And I ended up here. This is where I can't get no farther, okay? But I'm going to give you this link too. And I ended up clicked on, clicking on layers. And it took me here. It's a PDF form. And tells you all about the well locations and stuff like that. So it's plausible that they that they you know hit some kind of volcanic chamber or something, but I'm thinking probably not. Alright, now this is the uh the Google Maps version showing you the raised area here of the seabed. Looks like a channel, an old sluice way of some sort. And then the deepest part of Lake Michigan is here. So it's possible a sea mount or lake mount is under here somewhere. But here's another avenue I'm thinking of the origin is possibly one of these watersheds where the Precambrian -Cam -pre rocks are exposed due to the uh, surface mining for the massive sulfide deposits and copper and gold and all that. They may have disturbed some of the uh, near surface pumice beds. And they may have ended up in the watersheds, trickling down into the into the uh, water. Now they could float around and create mats or whatever. But I'm going to give you uh, that link and this link. I'm not allowed in any of these to give you some more information. And I'm going to give you this link. They stopped me here and dead in my tracks. I was able to read before they shut me down. But here's something I want to show you. This is important. I did a search just a couple minutes ago entitled uh, Hydrothermal Vents Backslash Great Lakes. And I kind of scrolled down and I found myself a little something that's extremely interesting. And this uh, kind of makes the uh, underwater lake seamount deal more plausible. This is from uh, panda.org and it describes hydro hydrothermal vents and Okay, I'll have to get this down here. Wait a minute. Is that what I wanted to show you? Well, I'm not so sure that's the one I wanted to take you to. Okay, Great Lakes re Reveal Bizarre Life Forms. Okay, this is the one. Okay, now this is important. Now this is in uh, 2009, let's grant it that, and you got to consider the source, I've never been here before, but life can indeed be found in the most inhospitable places, and it goes to talk about a discovery in Lake Huron, 66 feet below, where no oxygen can be found in the water, and salt levels are way above the tolerance limit, limit for other life forms that usually live in the lake. They describe it as sinkholes, and there's more than one of them, and sediment deposits and, and there's brilliant purple mats of cyanobacteria that can be found in Lake Huron that are closely relatives to other bacteria species which can be seen inhabiting lakes in Antarctica. The only difference is that the waters of the South Pole are constantly covered by ice so the organisms living there have to make do with the way they can find at the bottom. Their moves are limited to the confines of the lake itself 
for the most part of the year, it's not even oxygen, not even oxygen comes in. In, the, in American Great Lakes, the water near the bottom is always incredibly dense. Oxygen is also missing, as upwards and downwards currents are simply too weak or do not exist at all. In addition, the liquid is very salty, not unlike the water that can be found springing up from hydrothermal vents located at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean.